And welcome to Harbin. It's the coldest city in Dongbei and it's currently minus 25 degrees. Hey mom, hey dad, where are you guys? We're in Fiji, it's around 30 degrees. <laughs> hey mom, quick question. What's the temperature of our freezer at home? Usually. Well, I am currently in a place seven degrees colder than our freezer. Oh my gosh. Well, I'll leave you guys to enjoy the South Pacific. I'm going to go explore Harbin a bit. One of the main reasons I wanted to visit Harbin is its very unique cultural heritage. Believe it or not, this city was once a thriving cosmopolitan center for Russian culture. The influence of Russia came in the late 18th century with the construction of the China Eastern Railway, which was an extension of the Trans-Siberian Railway, which connected China with Siberia. And if you're wondering where Harbin fits into all of this, well, there's Harbin right there, right in that massive intersection. So basically, Harbin went from being in the middle of nowhere to the middle of everything and began to prosper as the largest commercial center of Northeastern Asia. Behind me here is Harbin Railway Station as it looks today. It's already 120 years old. Thousands and thousands of Russian engineers, railway builders, employees, soldiers and families moved to Harbin at that time. Houses were constructed, furniture and personal items were even brought in from Russia. So as a result, this city earned the name the Oriental Moscow because of its Russian look and feel. Although there may not be too many Russians still living here today, you can definitely still see the footprint of their time here all those years ago. I mean, check out this building behind me here. I feel like I could be in Russia. There are also a lot of French and Baroque style buildings here, so Harbin is also often referred to as the Oriental Paris. I'm currently walking down Zhongyang Dajie or Zhongyang Street and it's probably the most obvious legacy of Russia's involvement with Harbin. There's a lot of history on this street, also a lot of interesting things to see and do as well. The first thing I'm noticing walking down this street is that every second person is eating an ice cream, which seems a little strange to me, like, is this a thing? <laughs> People are literally lining up to buy ice cream in minus 25 degree temperatures. But I guess the convenient thing is here, no freezer is needed. Bye bye, Nia. Bye bye, see you, see you. You know what they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Can't help but feel it's a little bit strange eating ice cream in such cold temperatures, but you know what, gotta get amongst it. It tastes very nice. Another upside is I can eat it as slow as I want, because I'm, I'm not scared it's gonna melt. Since we're on the topic of food, the local cuisine here in Harbin is also Russian influence. Here on Zhongyang Road, you're going to pass lots and lots of cute little Russian bakeries famous for their bread. I bought myself a lovely loaf of Russian bread. It's very dry. You know what this bread needs? It needs some sausage. Conveniently, Harbin sausage is another notable product. They're known as red sausage or hong chang, and I've heard they tend to be a lot more European tasting than other Chinese sausages. Well, now I got my sausage and I got my bread. <laughs> Let's make this happen. Mmm, much better. Match made in heaven. The dryness of the bread complements the moistness of this sausage perfectly. It's got a really lovely smoky taste that I'm enjoying a lot. You know what? Let's keep this ball rolling. We've had ice cream, we've had bread, we've had sausage. Let's go get a drink.
I'm here in a very unique bar made entirely of ice. Even my little shot glass here is made of ice. And of course, when in the Oriental Moscow, gotta have some Russian vodka. Nazdrovye. As many of you also know, Harbin is very famous for one other thing, the Snow and Ice Sculpture Festival. It's actually happening at the moment, so join me next video as I go check it out. See you then guys, bye!